The conceptual roots of Shostakovich's 14th Symphony are found in his 1962 orchestration of Mussorgsky's Songs and Dances of Death, and more fundamentally, in the composer's experience of failing health. Four years earlier, he'd felt the first symptoms of weakness and pain in his right hand that would end his career as a pianist and make the act of writing music difficult. This was the beginning of a cascade that included serious falls, long hospital stays, chronic pain, multiple heart attacks and strokes, diagnoses of polio, ALS, and finally lung cancer, which was the proximate cause of Shostakovich's death in August of 1975. Increasingly filled with a sense that his life was entering its final stages, his orchestrations of Mussorgsky's songs prompted a desire to write a work that expressed his own views on human mortality. He felt that much of the music written on the subject was marred by a conceptual softening of death's finality, either through themes of philosophical redemption or appeals to the supernatural. In his judgment, death is in store for all of us, and there is nothing beyond it. The 14th Symphony, which Shostakovich described as the work to which all his previous music had been leading, became the vehicle for expressing his deeply held convictions on the matter. Hobbled by pain and the lingering effects of a heart attack he'd suffered three years earlier, Shostakovich entered the Kremlin Hospital in mid-January of 1969. Moscow was in the midst of a flu epidemic, and visitors weren't allowed. Stuck in enforced isolation, the music of the 14th Symphony came pouring out of the composer. He completed a piano score of the piece by mid-February and finished the orchestration by the end of the month. This urgency wasn't entirely circumstantial. In a letter to a friend, he wrote, I composed it very quickly. I was afraid something would happen, like my right hand would stop working altogether or I'd suddenly go blind. I was tortured by these ideas. This anxiety continued as he planned the work's premiere, leading him to go with his second choice for soprano soloist because her schedule was light enough that she could learn her part quickly. As Shostakovich explained, I'm afraid I'll die soon and I want to hear this work. The 14th Symphony is essentially a song cycle. For his texts, Shostakovich chose 11 poems about death by Garcia Lorca, Apollinaire, Rilke, and Wilhelm Kuckelbecker, setting them for soprano and bass and accompanying them with an unusual ensemble of 19 string players and percussion. These texts address questions of human mortality that were personally important to Shostakovich. Garcia Lorca's depictions of the Spanish Civil War's inhumanity is clearly relevant to the composer's life experience, which was irrevocably darkened by the death of millions at the hands of Stalin. The vexing issue of his responsibilities as a cultural hero within a politically repressive society is addressed in Apollinaire's cryptic ruminations on guilt and complicity. Rilke's poems articulate Shostakovich's belief in death's unalterable finality, and the exhortations in Kickelbecker's verse express the eternal wish of the artist to achieve a measure of immortality through one's work and the influence it may have upon future generations. In addition to its dramatic subject matter, the musical language in Shostakovich's 14th is far more uncompromising than the syntax that defines the music he wrote over the previous three decades. Although he had previously criticized 12-tone music as a dead end, so-called dodecaphonic techniques played a major role in his final works, and in this regard, the 14th Symphony marks his first full embrace of 12-tone procedures. Like Stravinsky, he adapted the technique to serve his expressive ends, using it to generate melodic and motivic material as well as tone clusters. This complex musical vocabulary is combined with an instrumental texture that emphasizes hard-edged clarity and sonic isolation, and it is the synergy of these elements with the work's poetic and rhetorical content that gives this symphony its particular expressive power. Shostakovich knew that the unflinching vision expressed in this piece would lead many early listeners to mistake his intent. With this in mind, he took the unusual step of willingly tolerating his extreme discomfort with public speaking and appearing before the audience at the work's premiere to explain that the 14th Symphony's message is not one of nihilism. 
Life is our dearest possession. It is given to us only once, and we should live so as not to experience regret at the moment of death by a recollection of years wasted aimlessly, or feel shame for a petty, inglorious past. Rather, we must be able to say in that final moment that we have given all our life and energy to the world's most noble cause, the fight for humanity's liberation.